Well, good morning, everybody. So, uh, this is interesting. If First off, if you're new to the channel, my name is Matt Shoemaker, and this is Tech Forum. I do a number of different things on this channel. Uh, the primary thing that I do is discuss uh, owning the Tesla Model 3. This is my 2018 long-range rear-wheel drive Tesla Model 3. I've had it for, I don't know, 10 and a half months, 10 months, whatever. At this point, I have over 38,000 miles on it, and I discuss the ins and outs of owning it, using autopilot like I'm in now, and just uh, charging expense, and just various topics related to this car, also to the EV industry as a whole, and um, I build some uh, electric bicycle and, and other small electric propulsion projects in my shop. Uh, now, the channel, I, I'm going to continue doing uh, as much uh, Model 3 videos and project videos and that as I can, as I have in the past, but I'm going to, uh, in addition, add some uh, technical videos related to yesterday's video. And what that is, yesterday I revealed, if you want to call it that, that my profession is I do uh, major in-home appliance repair, washers, dryers, stoves, dishwashers, refrigerators, microwaves, that kind of thing. And um, I service uh, Northern Illinois, Northeast Illinois, uh, Lake County, McHenry County. Anyways, um, I've been asked by a number of different people what I do for a living because I've mentioned in the past that I use my car for work. And I thought, you know, I may as well just explain it rather than leave people in the dark. And that has sparked uh, quite a few comments in the comments section. And I also, um, I put my email address in the, uh, in the description. And I've been receiving emails from people asking technical questions about appliances. And I've had a number of requests to do videos regarding appliances. So I wanted to start a series of appliance videos. These will not in any way supersede my Model 3 videos at all. I'll still be doing a Model 3 video about every other day, which is what I've been doing up to this point. Uh, but the appliance videos will be in addition to the Model 3 videos. The appliance industry is an interesting one. And what I want to do, the first video that I want to do today is on advising uh, prospective appliance buyers a good direction to go in what to purchase. Now, as with any products that you purchase, much is going to depend on your needs, your budget, your desires, that kind of thing. And more often than not, washers and dryers are the first appliances that people ask me about, so I'll address those first. Uh, also, let me say, uh, preface this whole discussion by saying, I'm here in the United States. Uh, in the U.S., appliances uh, much of what I will say will not apply if you're overseas. So some of what I say will, but many overseas customers have different brands that they uh, that they have available to them, and uh, gas versus electric and all of that is different. So much of what I'm going to be discussing is going to be primarily related to the U.S. market. So now when it comes to washers and dryers, uh, I'll start by saying the best washer dryer uh, set that you can own would be side by side, not stacked. You don't want stacked machines unless you need them. I mean, they do serve a purpose, but if you can fit side by side machines in the opening that you have, that's preferable. They're easier to service and they're less costly to purchase. Generally, um, they are more reliable. They're just, uh, they're, they're better to own and better for me to service. Uh, as far as the best washer dryer set to purchase from a brand standpoint, I'll say this. Uh, if, you, if you look at the appliances, the washer and dryer that you own now, uh, the best machines currently in use would be 10 to 20 year old Whirlpool washer and dryer. And the reason for that is going back, well this actually started close to 20 years ago, but it really began to, to come into force eight to 10 years ago. Our wonderful EPA that likes to stick their nose where it doesn't belong uh, has uh, put efficiency regulations onto appliance manufacturers that are nearly unachievable. And what's happened is 
uh, washers especially, dryers to a certain extent as well, but washers primarily have gotten attacked to where now they're only allowed to fill with a small amount of water and in order to make a top load agitating style washer function properly with minimal water requires some technical hoops to jump through and those technical hoops also require more electricity use which in order to get the water use down and the electricity use down the machines have gone from being heavy duty mostly made of metal uh, you know, nice sturdy uh, AC induction motor running through a, a metal transmission to turn the rotational energy to agitation energy down to this plastic rotor and stator assembly that the rotor spins and stops and reverses and spins and stops and reverses and spins and stops for agitation. And I don't want to say it's a terrible system, it does have its merits, but it is far less reliable. Those machines don't clean as well and uh, they are more expensive to service than the old-fashioned mechanical washers. So if you have a 10 to 20 year old Whirlpool washer dryer set, keep them. Do not get rid of them. If you're in my area and you got a set, I'll probably buy them from you. I mean, they, are, they just don't make them that good anymore. Uh, Maytags of that era are pretty good as well, but the, the earlier Maytags are the awesome ones, more than 20 years old. I, well, I'd say more than 15 years old. Those are the Maytags that are awesome, but primarily Whirlpool, uh, what they call direct drive washer, which would be say 10 to 20 years old, those are the ones that you want. Now, if you're gonna buy new today, I'm not gonna give you individual specifics necessarily, unless you guys want me to dive deeper into it, but I'll give you some generalities here. In general, domestic appliances are gonna be preferable to imports. Now, this isn't always the case, but it's sort of a general painting with a broad brush. Um, Whirlpool, GE, Maytag, if you stick with those, you will have, I don't want to say better luck, you'll have less bad luck than if you bought imports. Now, what I mean by less bad luck is that right now, because of the EPA efficiency regulations, most appliances most new appliances are horrifically unreliable. I mean, they are terrible, terrible. Uh, most modern appliances, if you, um, let's say you bought a complete set of appliances. <clears throat> let's say you bought a complete set kitchen and laundry appliances from Whirlpool or GE or Maytag. You'll probably have one of all of those appliances, maybe two of them break down the first year under warranty. And then you'll probably have one breakdown within all of your appliances per year after that. That would be probably the norm. Now, uh, which sounds pretty bad, and it is, but let's say you bought all Samsung or LG or Fisher and Paykel uh, import appliances. Now, this might not be the case in other countries, but all I know is what they're importing here to the States are far less reliable. For instance, I'll pick on Samsung. Uh, I have a Samsung tablet mounted here. My phone is a Samsung. I have another Samsung tablet. We have a Samsung TV. Samsung makes good products in general, but their appliances aren't so good. Now, I would say the exception to that would be the washer and dryer. Samsung washers and dryers are, they're fine. They're harder to work on and they're more complicated, but they're all right. Their laundry, or excuse me, their kitchen appliances, however, are absolutely off the charts terrible uh, from a reliability standpoint. Now, they're, they're nice from a customer usability perspective, and they do make some, uh, some models that are good. Um, that being said, though, let's say you go back to filling your house with Samsung or, or LG. It's the same with LG. Samsung and LG appliances are very similar. Let's say you fill your house with Samsung or LG appliances bought new today. Remember how I said with the with the domestic appliances, you'll have one or two break the first year, and then you'll have one of that whole group of appliances break every year after that? If you do this with Samsung or LG, you're probably going to have three or four of them break the first year, and you're going to have two or three more breakdowns per year after that, mostly with the kitchen appliances. The refrigerators, the dishwashers, the microwaves, the ovens aren't, aren't too bad. Uh, Samsung and LG ovens really aren't all that bad. <clears throat> but 
the refrigerators primarily are terrible. The dishwashers are really bad. And when I say really bad, the the refrigerators are actually pretty reliable when it comes to cooling. So they'll keep running and running and running, but all the ancillary systems won't. Uh, uh, the, the light system, the fans, the dispenser in the door, the ice maker. So, and most service guys don't even want to work on them. Most service guys, at least in our area, if you call and say, hello, I have a Samsung or LG refrigerator, the next word out of your mouth as a consumer is, hello, hello, because the servicer won't even tell you he won't service it. He'll slam the phone down because he's been burnt so bad so many times servicing those refrigerators. Uh, and the dishwashers, again, are just as bad. So, and here's why. Uh, I, as a servicer, will get a phone call. Here's a really common one. My Samsung refrigerator stopped making ice. Okay, so I schedule the appointment. I go out and check it. You have a bad ice maker. So I order the ice maker. Well, the ice maker comes in. I go out to the customer's house. I open the box. It's the wrong ice maker in the box. Now, you would think, well, can't I open the box when I receive the part and see if it's right or wrong? Well, there's subtle differences, and it's hard to look at it and just know for sure if it's right or wrong until you go out there, pull the old one out, and you go, oh, well, the, the connectors are different. It won't plug into the harness or whatever. So you reorder. You put the old one back in. You reorder it. You, you take a digital picture of it, whatever. They, they send you another ice maker. You open it up. It's the right part in the box. Awesome. You go out there. You put it in. It doesn't work. They sent you a bad one. It's the right part, but it's bad in the box. So you put it all together again. You order another ice maker again. You go out and put it in, and that ice maker, it, it's the right one. It works. Awesome. They pay you. You leave two weeks or a month later they call you it doesn't work again and I am done warrantying work on appliances that are designed poorly so uh, I mean I'm a good servicer I'm very honest I always encourage my people to look up any servicer myself included on Angie's list and Google reviews to make sure that you have a good servicer there I'm an honest guy but I cannot make a living when the manufacturers refuse to send me anything that's worth a darn and um, so, so I will, um, let's see here. So I will, when somebody calls me with a Samsung or LG kitchen product, generally I'm as polite as I can be, but I'll let them know. I'll say, you know, it's, it's time and materials, whether it works or not, and there's no warranty on the work. And, and a lot of times they'll say, all right, you're the fourth guy I talk to. You're the first one that'll even talk to me about this. The others, two hung up on me. One said he can't help me. And now you're telling me this. Are these things really that bad? The answer is yes. So now I will say this. If you are someone that just bought a full complement of LG and Samsung uh, kitchen and laundry appliances, I would say to you, go buy an extended warranty on them. Now, uh, I, I almost hate to say that because extended warranties aren't all they're cracked up to be, and oftentimes they're problematic, but there are some good ones out there. Uh, but I'd say that the hassles you'll have dealing with a warranty company will be far less than the hassles you'll have dealing with fixing those things on your own. So that's one overarching principle in purchasing appliances is stick with domestic if you can, and they're... Yes, many domestic appliances were made overseas, and I'll say this as well. You could buy a Whirlpool, a Maytag, a GE, say, refrigerator, and only come to find out later that it's built by LG or by Samsung, and it's got that Whirlpool or GE or whatever label on it. That is unfortunate, and but it does happen. So what I tell people is when you find mainly refrigerators and dishwashers, this is urgent on uh, but you could do it on all appliances as well. When you pick an appliance, take the model number off of it. Now, the model number will typically be hidden behind one of the doors or under a lid or something on a tag, and it won't be a short number. It won't be like GE XL44. It would be a long number. It would be like uh, 8 to 14 digits long. JCB27891, it'll be some long number like that. Get your cell phone, take a digital picture of the name tag that has the model and serial number on it, and Google that, that model and serial number to find out its country of origin, where it was manufactured. And you want to make sure that you stick with, 
with domestic or uh, I'd say North American manufacture. So you'll see that some are made in Mexico, which is fine. Some are made here in the States. Benton Harbor, Michigan is, is uh, Whirlpool's primary manufacturing headquarters. But if it says made in Korea, stay away from it. Turn your back and run because those are the problematic units. Um, so that's some general overall information. Um, I don't want to sort of... Uh, <laughs> uh, feed you guys with uh, with a bulldozer and or make you drink from a fire hose, so to speak, by giving you too much information. But that's that's one sort of generality that if 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 there's one takeaway, if you could have lunch with a, an appliance repairman and get a bunch of information from him, but have one takeaway that you would would file away in your brain as urgent, that would be the one which is to, again, buy domestic and make sure that that domestic name was made here actually in the States. But don't expect even the domestic products to be as reliable as they used to be, but they will be they will have fewer problems than the, the current crop of imports. So anyway, uh, next video, I'll discuss something else and um, we will uh, we'll get to that tomorrow. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, if you have Model 3 questions, let me know. Uh, my Tesla referral code will be a link in the description below. And I will leave my email address in the description as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Take it easy now. Bye-bye.